The Premier League is back on the 19th of September, but Manchester United still have it all to do. Literally all to do. We haven't done anything so far that we needed to do at the start of the summer. And football is back on the 19th of September, so we haven't got very long. So it's a big month of decisions ahead for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and for Manchester United. And I'm going to run through that list of things that we need to do in this video. Uh, before I begin, make sure you go and follow me over on Twitter, Sam Peoples underscore. I've already introduced myself now, so you know I'm called Sam, for those who somehow didn't, because I never really introduced myself, but I have now. So follow me there, but let's run through that list. And of course, the first name on that list is Jaden Sancho. The, probably the only transfer activity we've actually really had this summer is United's failed pursuit so far of Sancho. We won't pay the £108 million that Borussia Dortmund want. They won't reduce their demands. It's left a stalemate. The transfer has stagnated. It was seemingly moving quickly and now isn't moving whatsoever. So United have to make a decision. Either we pay the money for Sancho or we look at alternatives because we've been linked to other players. Kingsley Coman is one. Scored the winner in the Champions League final for Bayern Munich last night. So I imagine his value has just gone up a few million. Douglas Costa, he's another one at Juventus. But regardless of what we're doing, we need to do something. If we're going to get Jadon Sancho, let's go for it. Let's pay the money. Let's get it done. Let's move on. Because it's crippling us in the transfer market. Seemingly, we can only move for Sancho and no one else at the same time. But if we're not going for Sancho, go for the alternatives. Kingsley Coman, Douglas Costa, sorry. And name anybody else in the comments you think that we could go after if it's not those two. But a decision has to be made one way or the other with Jadon Sancho. And the most annoying thing about this whole Sancho situation is seemingly United can only deal with one major transfer at a time. And we need more than one this summer. We need a new centre-back. Now, Koulibaly, I think because Gabriel has now moved from Lille to Arsenal, or is going to, according to Fabrizio Romano, means he's not going to Napoli. So maybe that puts a, a halt on Koulibaly leaving. And he was apparently being linked with a 60 million euro move to Man City. Hell, we were linked with a 100 million move for him before we signed Harry Maguire. Why would you not go after Koulibaly for 60 million? Or someone like Upamecano, who has been fantastic for Leipzig. And we saw how good he was in that Champions League game. But we were linked with Upamecano before he moved to Leipzig. So this is not the first, na first time sorry, that his name has cropped up with United. But we need a new centre-back. And that's not even taking into account what's going on with Harry Maguire and the implications that that could have, if any, at United. But I'll get that into that later in the video. But we need Sancho. We need a centre-back. And we definitely need a central midfielder. Why are we not moving for a central midfielder? Look, Scott McTominay and Nemanja Matic, I don't think, as a duo, are good enough to get United to the Champions League final and to win the Premier League, which has to be our goals next season. And it's not as if we're going to achieve them completely, but they have to be our goals. And then you've got Thomas Partey. He's about 50 million. He's got a release clause at Atletico Madrid. And pay it if you want to sign Thomas Partey, 50 million. But if not him, Thiago Alcantara. Was he mad at the match in the Champions League final? People would argue that. He's leaving Bayern Munich and 30 million is his price. And he's being linked with a move to Liverpool. No one else is going in for him. Why would United not go in for Thiago? And then you've got, I don't know, Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid. You've got Van der Beek, who we could have easily gone for. But now that Ronald Koeman is manager of Barcelona, it seems that if he is going to leave Ajax, it's more than likely that it's Barcelona is going to be his destination. Had United acted earlier, I mean, you could say that about any transfer with United. Had United acted earlier, we probably could have got him. But Van der Beek, maybe he's not on the cards anymore. But a central midfielder, equally as important as a new centre-back. Equally as important as a new right winger in Sancho or Costa or Coman. But nobody at the moment. Absolutely nobody. And with Liverpool signing players. City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, all the teams around us are strengthening. While United are sitting here doing nothing. Decisions have to start being made. Simple as that. And we need signings in multiple positions. So just sitting here and wait, look. Because of the way that the fixtures have happened, we've got an extra week. The Burnley game's getting postponed and our first game is on the 19th instead of the 12th of September against Crystal Palace. That gives us an extra week. That genuinely might help us. I can see activity happening in that week. But just the complete lack of decisions. And remember, as much as we need all these signings, there is so much in-house keeping that needs to be done. Harry Maguire is a problem that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did not know he was going to have. But he now has. And the problem for Solskjaer is that he's made Maguire one of his centrepieces of this cultural revolution at United. 
and he's now been accused of being in a fight with police officers out in Greece, alleged that he hit a police officer, bribery is being involved. Look, it's an open case that everything is alleged at the moment and you can't go any further than that until all the facts come out. But that's not a problem that Solskjaer knew he was going to have, but he has to resolve. With the goalkeeping issues, is David De Gea going to be United's number one next season? We still haven't had that resolved. Henderson is on the verge of signing a new contract. Sheffield United have signed Aaron Ramsdale or are going to. They're already planning without Dean Henderson next season. So does that mean that Henderson at United next season competing with De Gea? Does it mean De Gea might be sold and Henderson's going to be our number one? Tons of questions. Not much time to resolve it. And then you've got players who could leave Manchester United. What is happening with Jesse Lingard? I don't think he should be playing for United next year. And I think it's about time that we moved him on. What about Phil Jones, a player who somehow is on the verge of a testimonial at United? He's still here. Diogo Delot, he's being linked with the move away, maybe to PSG. Is he going to move? Then I don't know, Andreas Pereira is another player who could leave. Then you've got players like Dylan Levitt. You've got players like James Garner, they could go on loan. There is so much that needs to be done at United. And because we haven't done anything so far since the end of the Premier League season or the end of our Europa League campaign against Sevilla, we've just sat and waited and waited and waited and waited until the point now... It's the 24th, I think, of August. And on the 19th of September, United are back in Premier League action. We haven't signed a new right winger. We haven't signed a new central midfielder. We haven't signed a new centre-back. We haven't resolved the Maguire situation. That's relatively new, so that's ongoing. We haven't resolved De Gea or Henderson's situation. Or Pereira's or Delots or any other player that could and should be sold by United this summer. I just don't understand why we like to do this to ourselves. When we don't really have to, if we acted swiftly and decisively, then we wouldn't be in this situation. And unfortunately, that's what happens when you've got Ed Woodward and Matt Judge in charge of negotiations because a negotiation that could be done quite quickly and, and relatively straightforward in terms of the price that you pay, it's drawn out, it's painful and it's long. And it, it's, 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 everything has to become a saga with United. It's never just a clean cut transfer. This is what you want. Here's the money. We've signed the player. Thank you very much. Other, pl other teams seemingly can do that, but United can't. And maybe it's because United are in the press more. It's because it's United, things get drawn out. But I think a lot of it's self-inflicted. But with only a few weeks left until the 19th of September, now is the time where decisions have to start being made by Manchester United, by Ed Woodward, by Matt Judge and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on what is going to be done, what the priorities are and what will happen and what the club really wants to get done and sorted before that game against Crystal Palace. Because sure, the transfer window is open until October. Early October is when it actually closes. So that's the actual deadline. But as we've seen with Bruno Fernandes, by not signing him in the summer and signing him in January, we missed out on months of having Fernandes helping this squad. So why do the same thing, even if it's only a matter of weeks? Why do the same thing with these key signings? Get them done early is always the mantra every summer. And that's the one thing that we don't do. And that's one thing that we clearly haven't learned from. And clearly, we're making the right signings now in Bruno Fernandes, in Juan Bissaka, in Harry Maguire. I do still think he's a very good signing. I still want more from him. I still think he needs a partner. Dan James, question marks after what was a brilliant start. But we're making signings for the right reasons rather than just signing marquee players like Di Maria and Falcao and just players who did not work out or Sanchez because we bought them for the wrong reasons. But now we're just not buying anybody at all. But let me know how you're feeling about the month ahead, because it's frustrating. It really is. But United are doing the same problems again. Let's see if things change. As I said before at the start of the video, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at SamPeoples underscore. Follow us on Facebook too. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash The People's Person. Lots of videos and debates and conversation on there. Make sure you drop a like on the video. And if there's any other videos you want me to do, let me know in the comments too. Until next time though. Take it easy.